Two, three, four. Run up your engine! Today I'm going to show you why you shouldn't drive your car too far when the suspension parts are starting to wear, has too much play, handles squirrely. Things like this can happen. Now luckily, for me at least, not for the owner of this car, it's an older Toyota Camry. So it's got a pretty solid frame and good places to jack it up. So I can jack it up because this thing is so low now because it's broken off. It'd be hard to jack on a modern car, but not here. Because right under here, there's the tow hook. It's right under. And when you get under here, you can see the tow hook. The tow hook is right here. Now it's meant to pull, but you can also jack up on it. So now we have the jack on it and we can jack it up. Now we can analyze the mess inside here. As we look inside, the ball joints come out. That's broken. It's gonna need a new ball joint. The axle's broken. May have bent the strut, we don't know. We're gonna have to take the tire off and go a little bit further. So I'll get a little screwdriver here and we'll pop this cover off. And we'll take off the lug nuts. But before we do, let's put a jack stand. We gotta jack it up a little higher. Safety first there. Here's an old trick if you work by yourself like me. Get a long screwdriver, start the car, jam on the brake. With that on the brake pedal, and we'll pull it forward. I'll lock the wheel so we can take it off now. And we can take it off. Now this one's gonna be a stinker because it's kind of wedged in. You can barely do it by hand, I'll just keep twirling it. Now we'll see if we can whack it off. Not much room here, we're gonna have to turn the wheel some. Hope we can get it loose enough. It's getting there. A little more wiggling. There we go, finally. Now we can turn the car off and assess the damage. Well, it's pretty much destroyed the wheel. Gonna be a lot of other damage in here too. The ball joint popped out. We don't know if this is good or not. It might be wallowed out too. And the axle's definitely broken. It's popped out, so we're gonna have to check under the hood too. And then look under here. And it looks like that's broken too. That one's okay, but that one's broken. Now at a minimum, it's gonna need a lower ball joint, a drive shaft, and a strut. Truthfully, considering the shape of this car, as you can see, the paint's all faded, door handle's broken, and on the other side, that paint's all faded out. This car used to be gray and some fool painted it black. Considering we don't know what kind of shape the other side is in, I rather doubt the owner's gonna spend the money it's gonna cost now if he was a do-it-yourself guy, which he isn't. He could go to a junkyard and buy a bunch of used parts and put them on, but I'm not gonna do that because I gotta guarantee my work and I can't be using junkyard suspension parts. I mean, if he wanted to do that himself, let him go at it, but the way this vehicle stands now, I doubt it's going anywhere except the junkyard. So I called up the owner, we're actually the friend of the owner. He brought it over for a friend, and they said, yeah, they're not gonna fix it. So, here's a lesson to be learned. And the lesson is this, as I've been beating people over the head with for decades. You're gonna buy a used car, this car was just bought used, always, always have a mechanic check it out first. Hey, even a great car like a Toyota Camry, you don't take care of them, they get old and have a lot of mileage on it, they can be endless money pits like this thing. If I would've checked this out before he bought it, I would've said don't buy it. When you drove it around, you could feel the front end was totally shot. And I told him, hey, I wouldn't take that car on the highway if I were you. That thing is totally shot. I had it going 40 and it was, you hit a bump and it would go, and I saw the whole front end's out. And I told him, that's gonna cost well over a thousand bucks to fix. And that was before it broke off. Now the price is gonna be even higher. So always, Always have a mechanic check out a car before you buy it, even if it's a Toyota Camry. Now, I'm gonna pop this back in so at least I can get it to roll on the ground so the tow truck won't have to drag it like they did. A little drag marks on the street, but at least it'll roll when I'm done. Start it up. Straighten it up a little. Now it's straight. No, it's not gonna drive because the drive shaft's broken, but I at least popped it and <laughs> stuck a nail in one of the holes so at least I can push it so the tow truck driver will have an easier job. Put the wheel back on. I hate these alloy wheels where you gotta line them up. If you don't, they'll be on crooked. So you gotta keep wiggling while you tighten them up so they're lined up. <clears throat> now we got them lined up so we can do the other three easy. Then we'll put the hub cap on, I don't know why, but I will. <laughs> And don't forget to remove the jack stand. And we'll see if we can get some air in the tire for a while to at least move it. And if you use a quality air pump like this, it doesn't take long. All steel construction. Yeah, it costs more than one of those cheap $20 ones. 
This thing will last a lifetime if you take care of it. <laughs> and now at least we can push it so the tow truck will have an easier job. Don't buy an old used car unless the mechanic checks it out first. And two, don't let your suspension system go so far that the wheels start flying off like this one did. And here's some bonus questions and answers. Mano, 1991 says, Scotty, I want to get rid of my money pit. 03 Dodge Ram 1500 with 180,000 miles. What 2020 pickup would you buy? Well, if you want something big like that, I'd definitely go Ford. You know, Toyota makes great pickup trucks too, but they're not really that type of truck. You know, the uh, Tacomas are great little trucks. Uh, the Tundras are good trucks, so they can last a really long time, but they're awful expensive for what you get. And you really get more in a truck with Ford. F-150 is what keeps them Ford afloat. I think it's like 80% of their profits made from the F-150s. Definitely, you'd be much happier with an F-150 than your money pit Dodge. I mean, you were lucky you got 180,000 miles out of the thing. But then again, I'm assuming you probably put a bunch of money into it too, because you're calling it a money pit. You wouldn't be doing that with a Ford. Tallboy says, thoughts on a 1979 Trans Am with 16,000 miles for five grand. All right, back in 79, Trans Ams were well built. I had a friend with them, he drove the heck out of it. It burned a little oil in that V8 engine, but it ran fine. Now, there's no way they're probably ever going to prove that that thing really has 16,000 miles on it. I think it's a lie. No way. Car that old, people got Trans Ams, they drove the heck out of them. You know, if it really has the real mileage on it and all the serial numbers match, buy it. It's kind of a collector's car. It's worth a lot more than that. But I doubt that that's the real mileage. Now, the main thing you want to look on that car, though, is those things were notorious rust buckets. So get under there with a jack, and if it crunches and you hit the frame and stuff with a hammer and the metal just crunches off, it's a rust bucket. I wouldn't give 50 cents for it because then you'd have to do a frame off restoration. And it's not worth doing. Check that out first before you go any further. Red Dungeon says, Scott, your name's Red. I want to buy a second generation Ram 1500, but a five speed and a 3.9 V6. Is it worth it? I can't stand Chrysler products, but with a five speed standard and a six cylinder engine, if it wasn't beat up, it could be an okay truck. The transmission stink, but the automatics, that's a standard. If a mechanic checks it and says it's good, guys generally beat the heck out of the V8s with the Hemis, but the sixes, they usually don't drive them as hard. And I've had some customers buy those six cylinders with standards who are reasonably happy with the cars. Don't pay that much. They're not worth that much. So they don't have much value, but if you can get a good price, it could be a good knock around truck for doing little light jobs and stuff like that. I mean, don't pay much for it, but it might last you a few years. Tom Trevick said, Mr. Kilmer, should I sell my 2003 Ford Econoline van with 27 original thousand miles? No, 27,000 miles, and that's an 03. They were still making them really good back in 03. And with that kind of mileage, you got tons of life left. Don't waste your money and get a new van. That thing is solid built. That'd be like going from a swimming pool into a boiling cauldron, messing with new stuff that's higher tech that isn't gonna last as long. And if it's 27,000 original miles and you're the original owner, you know that's real? Keep it. Don't waste your money. Don't throw it away. Caglia says, Scotty, I got a 93 Jeep Wrangler. Runs a little rough. I think it's the injectors. What do you think? Well, geez, that thing's 27 years old. It could be thousands of things. If you tried the spark plugs, the air filter, the fuel filter, and it still is, yeah, try my video. How to clean fuel injectors without removal. Have them pressure clean. It could easily be that because those had returnless systems even back then, and they have a tendency of having fuel dirt getting in the injectors. The injectors have tiny little screens that are screen filters. They will clog up over time and that cleaner can clean them out. So what the heck? Why not try that? If you've tried other stuff, if you haven't, heck, try spark plugs and all that stuff first. Dan Dunlavy says, what's the best tool for removing a rounded off bolt? Well, they make various sockets that fit on them. There's a company called Rocket Socket. They make very good socket removers. Rocket Socket, can't forget that. Put them on and like you put it on the bolt and then kind of hit it with a sledgehammer to make it tight and then try to get it off. It's a reverse thread, rips it off. Now, if it's really messed up, you can do a trick. If you know how to weld, if you don't pay a welder, you get another bolt and you weld that on top of the rounded one, and you know how to weld, that weld's strong. The weld is stronger than the steel it's welded to. Then once you weld a new bolt on top, you just put the regular socket on that bolt and the whole thing comes up. I have done that hundreds of times in my career when something's really messed up, like down here in Texas, it's not bad. Things don't rust unless you live in the Gulf Coast and drive on the beach. But every once in a while, somebody brings a car down here from Detroit or Cleveland or Buffalo or Montreal, all the bolts are rusted. I get on my torch and start weld and stuff on to get them off.
So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.